All right, so this is my quarterfinal match against Samuel Lee at the Adult Nationals. Um, this ends up being a pretty long match, uh, and it's a it's a pretty long grind. But here we see in the beginning, I kind of start testing him out with the flat game to kind of see um, if he wants to get into those exchanges and how how good he is. And, and there I do kind of win at the flat exchange, which I do start to use a little bit more um, in the match. But here he takes a forehand recovery a little bit late um, we're both still trying to get kind of into the points right now and get a little warm so 2-0 good service here um, I'm really trying to get into my rallies and kind of get feelings on my clears my lifts there is a really short lift to his overhead side and you saw that I got punished right away um, he didn't even need to turn for backhand he was able to just snap down a straight smash for a winner a little unforced error right there um, off of a cross court drop. Um, again, my strategy this entire tournament was to really get into longer rallies and um, play a more consistent game. So here you see I start off with a good quality forehand lift and catch him flat footed for um, a cross, a reverse cross drop. A little bit of high serve, but pressures me. I go to the overhead again to his backhand corner which he gets me again with a straight smash. And um, that turns out to be a very effective shot for him in, in this match. So he just caught me off of a straight smash on a lift the previous point. So there I wanted to just give him a net off of the service turn and it worked out. Worked out. Here I'm bringing the shuttle down mostly with my recovery um, and then another steep stick smash by Samuel. At this point, I know he's quite dangerous from the back, and um, I really know that I need to dial in my defense because he is gonna give me a lot of pressure from, from the back, whether it's a clear or a lift. So here I am just trying to keep him moving back and forth, you see. So off of a lift, when he puts it down, I give him a block, and there was a good, uh, a good save by him. Should have been a point on my end. Um, I, I mean, I went for a huge kill there and thought it was a, a point, but went straight to his racket in his forehand and he was able to save it. So here we go again, just really passive. Um, that one was a little bit too loose, that recovery shot, and he was able to cross it right away. So um, probably could have punched him to the back, but I do need to do a better job of keeping him on, my, on his toes when I am in those recovery positions. little unforced error by him um, straight smash and instead of just a normal block um, I was able to relift it um, and then he went for just a cutoff which went straight into the net pretty good service there um, here I'm initiating the attack um, and then you see right after attack and I hit it I follow in for the net I kind of stay towards the net to kind of pressure him and force the unforced error lift um, out on the side and that was really because I was able to pressure him at the net. You know, I stayed in after my net. Backhand recovery, and he's playing a lot of crosses now to move me around. And then there with a good straight smash, my block just barely clipped the tape and didn't go over. So um, played it a little bit too tight. Pressure on the forehand corner and then the reverse cross drop. So I think this is now the second reverse cross drop slice that I've hit a winner on. And so I do know it's quite effective because for a taller player like Samuel, sometimes it is a little bit tougher for them to make that quick lateral turn. A little net that clipped the tape and then just a good smash. Um, took it, he took advantage of that net spin that clipped the tape and then off of my short lift, um, hit a really good winner. So back to his forehand corner, uh, I was a little loose so I blocked it down. Um, here again, I'm tr really trying to get into the rallies with him. Wasn't sure if it was in or out there, um, but really trying to pick pick apart his, his overhead corner right there. And so see, he was late there and he tr still tried to bring it down. Um, but now I'm tr really trying to just focus on consistency and not give away too many easy points early on in this first game. Here we go, now initiating some attack. Good save by him, but I'm gonna continue to attack. Um, smash follow back to that overhead corner but he just clips it down close call um, might have clipped the line I thought it was out but 
Again, you see how he's really able to use his height to still try to um, be aggressive from the overhead side. And so for me, I really, I know I really need to focus on the height and the depth or else he's really gonna punish me. Again, right there. I even gave him a little double action on that service return um, to throw him off a little bit, but he was still able to get me with a good straight smash right away. So I'm just trying to avoid that corner for now. You know, I start with the block, a net, and then here's an unforced error by Sam. He tries to pump me to my forehand corner. Here we get into some flag exchanges. Um, missed my timing right there um, and just went straight up and he was able to put it back down. Here you can see I'm actually trying to look at Coach Locke again, trying to see if I can pick up on any of the pointers he's trying to give Samuel. I think if you guys have seen uh, my other video in the finals as well, I was playing Enrico or Keone and same thing, you know, in these tournaments, these smaller tournaments where you're so close to the opponent, uh, you can kind of pick up on coaching tips that you hear from them, especially if they're talking in the same language. So here at 11 at the interval, I know I need to get a good start. So here you see I pick up the pace a little bit at the front to try to pressure him in the back. Here he gets me in the backhand corner, but I play a good recovery shot. And here he's also speeding up a little bit. But there we go. I got him on the overhead backhand corner and his recovery shot was just way too loose and way too high. And at that point, when you have those type of reco recovery shots, you have to really take them as early as you can and just cross them. Here he is again, really good angle from the overhead side. Um, and then he followed it with a straight lift where I wanted to just bring it down for a straight drop, but played it a little bit too tight. On that one, I probably could have just went for the service line instead of trying to cut it super short. Here we go again, starting with the net off of the service because I didn't want to lift it right away to give him the attack. And then his cross, uh, his cross net was just way too high. Um, I showed up, I showed really early with the racket and then just blocked it. Here we go again with some flats. He's pressuring off the serve. You know, I'm not playing too rush from the back, right? Until I have a really good opportunity, like that was a good opportunity to smash. But then I'm just getting back into my recovery. High lifts like that, you see high lifts is not as dangerous. And then there I just kind of try to guide the shuttle out to the corner a little bit and it was just a little bit too much. Um, didn't need to go that far for the line on that one. Here we go again starting with a lot of flat exchanges. And after two I try to get out of it to try to pump over him, which was tough because he's so tall and he was able to just jump and bring it down. So. At this point, I know with these flat exchanges, I probably need to continue with the flats or block instead of trying to lift it over him. Here we go, good lift right to the corner and I block it to the cross court block. A Little bit loose from him. Um, that block was very loose from him. I was able to take it high for a push and even hold for a little bit uh, to guide it to the outside corner to his backhand side. <clears throat> See, with the flat exchange, I know it has to have a downward trajectory. I can't be giving him loose drives, and I also can't be trying to pump over him because he's shown that he can just jump and grab those down. Here, here I go with the flick serve and then kind of blocking. Attack coming right there, cross block. Ooh, that was a very good cross mash. See, I knew right away that it wasn't high enough. Right, the first lift that I had where he crossed to my forehand side, um, it was high enough and I was able to save it, but this one was just way too low, way too flat, um, and he was able to cross it right away. So there I went with a little bit of a deception um, off the service return, uh, and then came in for the kill, but he was able to get out of it. Now we're back in the rally. From the back again, I'm staying patient, nothing too crazy. Here he is with a straight smash in the net and then I get him on a good net. I, I just had it a little bit behind me or else I would have been able to push it back to his backhand corner right there. That net exchange was pretty important right there where I just missed the recovery shot. There we go again, playing this, a lot of these cross blocks, right? And that was a good lift right there actually. Um, his smash wasn't too dangerous, came right to my racket, but um, I just went too tight on that return and didn't even really reach to the net. 
double fake action right there on the backhand uh, front, but he was able to read it right away and smash. So I was pretty fortunate that his smash went to the net right there. It was just a lazy shot by me. Crucial service mistake. Uh, I mean, that would have brought me, I think, within two points. Um, points like this just can really turn the tide in a, in a game, and I think I think it does here. I think he gets some momentum after that service mistake. Yeah, see, another really good straight smash, right? So from that overhead side, he's hit maybe three or four good winners on me already by now. And he does stick with this for a lot of the rest of the match. Just a little bit late on the follow-up there. I already had him in the forehand corner, and then I also made a very good cross block. And his only option was really to straight net, but I just followed in way too slow. Again, just a high risk shot right there, right? I didn't need to go so tight for the reverse. Um, but again, this downhill all started from that one mistake, that service mistake that I made. Um, and I lost focus, he hit a couple winners and that really let the first game slip out of my hands. All right, here we go, started the second game, um, down one set already. Here I start the game off right away with a net instead of a lift to try to stay out of a defensive position. Here he's attacking right away, you see that? But I know that I need to really focus on my defense because he's gotten so many winners already. So here my mindset is really, on all my lifts and my clears, I know that that first big smash he hits, I really need to really focus and return it because he's not so dangerous on the follow-up but most of his points have been coming from that actual smash winner. So here I'm just bringing the shuttle down, um, trying to force him to get into a rally game with me. So here you see with the smash again, high lift, high, high lift to force the attack. And as long as I'm blocking it, I'm usually okay. There on the third smash, um, I knew right away that I should have went with a straight clear instead of cross clear. Um, but again, he's gonna continue to attack and I need to really dial in and focus on my defense. There again, right away. I knew that it was just too low. Um, and I'm giving it to exactly where he's comfortable, right? He's been hitting a few winners in a row now. And so here I switch it up, right? Forehand corner, forehand corner again, net. I think I bring it down here. And then again to the cross drop. Yep. He, he moved a little bit to the left there, um, which opened up that, um, that forehand drop again for me. Service return mistake from him, um, have to capitalize on those. When you get those from your opponent, um, you really have to try to build some momentum here. Here, good backhand lift. Again, I'm going to the forehand now, right? I'm not going to his overhead backhand side unless it's very, very high quality like that one right there. And then I follow in with a good tight net, just bringing the shuttle down, right? I'm not trying to do too much attack, right? Um, I'm not trying to score quick, too many quick points. I'm really trying to get into the rallies with him um, because I know this has to go three, right? This is gonna go three games. A little bit loose on the recovery there. It was a little bit high, but I was able to get out of it and he just missed the line there. Um, but again, you see from that overhead backhand side, he's still going for that straight smash. And you can see his coach is nodding because he knows that's what he wants to go for. Forehand side, he goes for a good cross mash. Again, still giving me tons of pressure from the back. These are all really good winners. Um, and, and again, for myself, I know I have to stay patient because if I can get to a third game, it's gonna be hard for him to continue to hit all these same winners over and over. Here he goes again for it. Um, I knew it was coming, right? I knew the straight smash was coming um, and I went for the cross block. Uh, just kind of mistimed it and framed it a little bit. Here we go again, starting off with the forehand side off a lift. And he gets me off of a cross block off of my straight smash. My smash there just wasn't tight enough. You see how it was coming more inwards to the middle of the court versus out towards the line. And so um, it went straight to his hand into his racket. Easy for him to cross block. Finally, um, off from the overhead side, he was a little bit late. 
um, and went for a cross stick smash off of a bad position, uh, which is high risk, high reward. And I was able to capitalize with the point there. Here he's going to go for the attack again. You see that? Um, I was able to get it though, right? So you see how I'm really just focusing on defending that shot? Um, I don't even need to be that good of a quality return off of those smashes because his follow-up is not great. It's just really saving that overhead smash. Another service mistake right there. Crucial. Um, can't be giving those away. So here we're getting into a little bit more of the rallies. In the front, you see I'm focusing a little bit more on taking it early, but he finally gets me on a cross smash as well. I was a little bit flat-footed. Didn't think he was going to be able to hit that cross drop, but he was able to with good angle too. Here we go. I'm trying to apply a little bit of pressure now um, because he's been giving me most of the backcourt pressure. He backed up a little bit. He thought I was going to lift. You saw him back up a little bit and then... Um, I forced the mistake on the lift from him. Good lift by him, recovery. I'm trying not to lift here, you see, unless I really have to. Really high, clear. Again, just a good winner from him. Um, I thought I gave enough pace, enough depth on that clear. It just wasn't enough, right? Here I'm going with a little bit of a flat return instead now. Really close straight smash. Almost clipped the line. Um, luckily, I got the call there. That's a really big point for me. Here I go with the flick. And then I block. I'm trying to control the net here, right? Block again. Bring it shuttle down. Net. Just way too loose. Um, I was so out of position. So low. And I tried to block it still at the net. And he just came in, and, um, came in for the kill. Here I am trying to get... Back into the rallies again, right? I want to. I want to extend these rallies. I don't want to basically be chasing his smashes and letting him get those winners. So here I am doing a little bit of a better job controlling the pace and quality on the lifts and clears. You see that he's not able to smash that one, um, but he goes for a clear. The first time he tries to clear from that backhand corner, actually, and it's a mistake. Good lift again. Another straight smash winner. Um, just way too comfortable for him. Didn't put enough pace on it. Way too predictable on my end. Here I start off service receipt with the net. Trying to just bring the shuttle down. Again, I don't want to lift, right? He's just hitting so many winners from the back. Here with a good lift. Clips the net a little bit. And I was able to get out of that point right there for um, that game or for the first 11. 11-10 at the interval here at the second game. I know he's been making some mistakes now again, so my focus here is to stay consistent, save the big smashes, and really get into the rallies with him. So good start right here. I went for an outside corner serve right away off the interval to change it up and got a mistake. So that was huge right there to try to build some momentum off of this interval change. Again, kind of the outside corner to his forehand and a body smash to him, which I haven't really been using at all. Now this is really important to try to build some cushion right here. Now up 13. Kind of a bad serve, but again, start with the net and trying to control the net. Really high lift for him to attack. He does go for that straight smash. Now here I'm attacking, pumping him back to the forehand corner, and he goes for a reverse straight slice, which was a really nice shot right there. Straight smash or cross smash coming. You see, cross smash right there, but I was able to save. Um, here I move him a little bit to the forehand side instead. Too tight of a cross block, um, simple error. So he's getting, he's closing the gap a little bit here. Um, this is really where it gets important to increase the pace a little bit, cut down on the errors, and I, I know I really need to just get to this third game. Here we go again, kind of into the rally. See, my block is pretty safe, right? I'm just going into the court. Really good backhand save right by him off of my smash. And then he gets into an unforced error. So here I go off of the serve to control the net, bring it down straight in the middle. And here you see how ready I was for the defense, but still couldn't really manage to defend that straight smash. 
cross net right off the serve. Um, pretty aggressive and was able to get an unforced error off the lift from him. Also goes for the backhand um, cross net right away and uh, follow up with the net, but I was able to read that and brush right away. Here I'm super focused. You see I'm really focused on that straight forehand smash from him. And I know if it comes, I have to save it. Just trying to cut down on my unforced errors and really make him score the winners on me. Here I am with the net. Good lift by him. I hesitated a little bit, but we're into the rally. Here I take the cross really early, and then I was able to get a clip smash or a half smash. A little bit of deception off the service from him, and then he goes for the cross smash, but I save it. Here I'm getting ready for the smash again. You see how it's getting a little bit of frustration for him, right? I save that first big cross smash and get back into the rally, and I just know that I really need to be on the ground and save these smashes. Flat, caught it, um, I went for the cross uh, cross kill, but just missed it a little bit, my timing was off. Here he goes with the flick serve, um, I bring it down with a recovery shot, and then I try to go for a cross net, but a little bit too tight. I go with a little bit of a misdirection off the service return, and then I'm just playing safe in the middle, you see here? With the net, took it early too. I knew I could have pushed it straight instead of trying to go for the net there because I was so early. Now here he is again, forcing the attack, um, initiating, and he's trying to pressure me even from the front. Uh, fortunately, that lift was a little bit out, right? He, he tried to take the forehand a little bit early, um, but I was able to reach it and push it all the way to his forehand side and then come in for the cross net winner. Now we're going to the start of the third game. Second game was nothing special, right? But he was giving me some unforced errors here and there and not as many winners. And he's really paying, playing one pace, which basically is a little bit for me to adjust, right? Because I know basically I need to defend those big winners from the backcourt. Other than that, he's not doing too much deception no crazy changes of paces. Um, so I know what my game plan here is in the third set. You see I'm on the floor here to defend, and I know I just can't let those touch the ground, right? I need to keep defending two to three smashes in every rally. And so here I am, good defense into the longer rally, and then I get him on a cross drop. And it's really those two defense um, from the smash, the two smashes earlier that really got me into that position. I'm really trying to get into longer rallies with him, knowing that he just wants to put it on the floor from those big smashes. I actually want him to attack, right? I bring it pretty far into the court here again, right away. I'm trying to bait him to smash now, and I know as long as my qualities are getting good depth and good height, he's going to force the attack even when he shouldn't have to, right? So here you see again, good lift though. It was the right shot for me but just a little bit out. Starting out with the net, just bringing the shuttle down, trying to get into the rallies. Good block by him. There's the smash, right? I was able to defend. That one was way too low, but I was able to get back to it because I knew it was going to be a straight smash. So as soon as I hit that, I came rushing over to cover that straight smash. Outside corner serve, um, recovery backhand. Um, here I go with the net, another recovery backhand. Here I'm really just bringing the shuttle down, you see. Everything is just down and I don't want to lift. But there I get out of it, some trouble, and then I initiate the attack. Here he goes with the big attack and I had it. I basically had it at the tip of the racket and just missed the defense by a little bit. A little bit low. That backhand lift was a little bit low, a little bit flat, which gave him that um, attacking opportunity. Here I pressure him right off the serve, right? Instead of giving him a loose lift off of the serve, I'm pressuring him with some drives. And there's that smash. Shuttle broke a little bit, I think, there. But I just got a little bit behind the shuttle and couldn't bring it into the center of the court. See, from the back, he's just always smashing. That one didn't need to go for the outside, right? Could have brought that into the middle or at least to um, the cross side for him. And here's where it's getting a little bit close to being out of hand, right? Again, another straight smash winner. That one was a little bit low. I tried to give him a little bit of forehand, like a hold, and then pump it over his overhead, uh, but it was just low and he read it right away. So here I'm not gonna lift. 
right? So I net right away, but then, you know, I'm getting a little bit frustrated here. Another unforced error. Um, and he's building some momentum here. There we go, finally. So another hold. I know that I can't pump him to the overhead this time because he's gotten me so many times on the straight smash. And so I hold him a little bit and then I give him more of like a flat drive to his backhand side. Here we go with the re-net and then I give him the clear block. Again with the drive or the push, the flat push. And he goes for the big cross smash which luckily um, goes into the net. So here I'm really controlling the net now. I know that taking the net as high as I can is gonna be crucial. So there I take a good tight net spin, um, force a short lift by him and then go for the straight smash when he's out of position. Ah, uh, that was such a good opportunity. Because the previous rally I got him on a tight net right off the service return, I knew that there was a high chance of him lifting off the serve there and he did and I went for the cross court winner um, just a little bit out. Here again, I'm pressuring him with the flat exchange whenever he's giving me loose shots in the, in the front court. Um, and here it's effective again. Outside corner serve to his backhand and I go in for the net spin. Just took it a little bit too low. It's the right shot though. Again, I want to control the net there and so um, going for the net spin was a good shot. Where it was the right shot to, to, to make. Here I go with a hold again. Um, he goes for the straight smash and then here I'm just gonna bring it down again I want to basically stay consistent and make sure I'm defending right there barely got there again see his follow-up is not so so strong most of his winners are from the back is where he's hitting them um, they're not on the follow-up shot again here I'm really controlling the net if he's netting off of my service return I'm just re-netting to try to control the net here I am controlling the net on a re-net and then I get him off of a reverse drop. My follow is just a little bit out when I push him to the forehand corner. Really good missed opportunity there. So here he's not giving me attacks when he's out of position, right? Flat exchange right here, which has been working for me. You see that? And then I block. So I basically go from a flat exchange and then I'm able to convert it into pressuring him. So my flats are going down and then when I'm moving in closer to the T line, the service line, he's standing so far back that I just basically on the third one, I give him a soft block where there's no chance that he's getting to it. Unforced air from the overhead. So it's been maybe five or six points now since he's hit a smash winner. Um, and so I give him a, a good lift to his overhead side and maybe able, I'm able to get a mistake out of him. Another good missed opportunity um, at 10 all. So he gets to 11 first, but again, you know, off the serve, I read the lift and went for the straight smash out by maybe just about a half inch or an inch. At this point in the third game, I'm in a decent position. It's really close, right? It's 11, 10, one point deficit. I know I need to stay close at least to have a good chance and to really use the critical points to build some advantage. So here, 11, 10, you see I'm regressive off the serve to turn body shot that he's able to return. Um, here I'm just bringing it down, right? No unforced errors. I need to basically force him to make the errors or hit for him to hit the winners. And so there I'm able to, to get him all the way in the back and I come all the way in the front because I know it's gonna be a flat shot. There's no way that he's able to hit a recovery clear from that position. 11 all, these are critical, critical points here. Outside corner serve. And here I'm trying to attack a little bit now because I don't wanna be too defensive here. Good clear. You see how much power I put on that, but he's just is able to crank a straight winner there. Um, nothing I could do there on that one. So here again, um, I defend the first smash, but then I come in on the second one and try to pump it over him on the overhead side, but just a little bit out. Starting at the net again, right? Good high lift. He's gonna attack right here with the straight smash. Follows in for once actually, but I'm able to get out of it. Again, you see, He's not killing me so much on the follow. It's more the, the overhead winners where he's getting most of his points. 12-13, that was a big, big save by me. Flat exchange again, I'm able to bring it down. Uh, save this big smash winner that he wants there. And then get into the rally. That I thought should have been a winner. You see me hesitate a little bit. And ultimately, I think I lose this point, but that was just a result of me thinking that half court smash was gonna be a winner. 
still in the rally though. But then I make, see, there you go. I make the mistake. Should have followed up faster on that half court uh, smash because I was already there for the winner, but just kind of took my foot off the pedal a little bit. 14-12 now. He's, he has a two point advantage here in the third. Mistake off the service. 15-12. Um, this is crunch time. Here I know I, I can't beat myself. I gotta force him to hit winners on me and not give him unforced errors. So here I save the, the big smash and then I come in with the cross net right away. Again, his variation on his follow-ups on the smashes are not too diverse yet. And so right off of my defense, I knew that he was gonna give me a net and I basically accelerated in for a little quick change of pace for the cross net. Here I am now attacking, right? I don't wanna give him too much attack and I don't wanna lift. So here we're going with a net exchange. He's giving me the lift, cross, mat, cross drop, but a big straight winner right there. Frustrating right there. Again, starting off with just the net, I don't wanna give him the attack right away. And see here, I'm really just bringing all the shuttles down from the back. And then he opened up his forehand there a little bit with his stance where I was able to just hold a little bit at the net and then push him to the forehand corner. 14, 16 down here. Here with the lift, he finally gives me a clear instead of a smash. Forehand side, and I'm just trying to move him around back and forth, back and forth. There you go, right? You see there he went for a smash, straight smash, really out of position, super out of position. And I was able to block it cross court where he didn't even touch it. And so this is this is the turning point of the match because I know after that smash out of position, he's not gonna be smashing this next point from the back. So I think I flick him here and I focus on a drop shot right away. Yep, see I flick him and he, he drops right away and see how early I took that drop shot and get into an attacking position. It's so crucial in these points to know what type of shots your opponents might be hitting. Again, these last five or six points are really where I feel like my experience kind of kicked in um, against Samuel, who's a little bit less experienced than me right now. So here I go with the outside corner serve, bringing the shuttle down, right? I don't want to lift too much. Here he goes for the lift and goes for that big straight smash again. Um, luckily, I was able to win that point. And so here I'm thinking in my head again, he's missed one smash out just now. Two points ago, he went for one out of position and I was able to cross block him. He's not smashing here. So I think I flick him again right here, knowing he's not gonna attack me. Yep, right, see he drops again. I take it super early with the block and then I'm able to get his lift and get him in a defensive position, right? And so it's so crucial and so important that I knew that he wasn't gonna be attacking me from the back here because he had just making a few mistakes. Stick with the flick again. See, he's not able to attack, right? I think he's a little bit wary or a little bit scared to attack. And then you see the frustration right there. And so the flick serve is being so effective at the end because his smashes aren't really working for him. And he's not really willing to take that gamble or that risk right now at the end of the game. Here I go for a short serve, I think, and I know he's gonna lift, right? Yep, and I go for a body smash, yep. Because I haven't been giving him body smashes for about, I don't know, like half the game now, at least 10, 20 points. And so instead of going for the lines, I go for that awkward spot right near the hip and it turned out to be really effective. Here I go with, at 20, I needed to save that. He actually slips there. And if I would have saved that, that smash, there's no way that he was getting up to the front there. So I do have 20 now, match point. So 17, 20 right here, keeping it in, right? Keeping it down here, go for the attack. He's on the ground, I built some advantage off the push and then follow in for the winner right there for the match. You guys saw how crucial those five or six points were towards the end of this third game. I was able to really build advantage because of a few tactical errors that he made and kind of predicting what he might or might not hit, right? I knew that he wasn't gonna smash or he might be scared to smash because of a few errors um, and a few out of position smashes that he had already hit. And so when I do know that I'm basically able to eliminate the smash, I know that it's either going to be a drop or a clear from the back. If it's a clear, I'm going to be attacking. If it's a drop, I'm taking it early. And that just changed the whole outcome of the end of that match. So um, 
I hope that was helpful for you guys. And, um, you know, I'll see you guys in the next one.